so great to be here this morning, and I'm really thrilled to get to go after Michael New. I, I woke up this morning checking my email to this fantastic note from Michael that, uh, that said, you know, be cheered. And then in the, in the body of the text, he said, you know, I'll see you at the march. I'll be the one carrying the pro-life sign. <laughs> <And that> just, <laughs> so anyway, that just made my day. Because, I, you know, it, it got us off on the right start, I think. We really do need to be cheered. There, you know, it's uh, this. I have to tell you, this week it's it's been a it's been a harder week than I thought it would be. Um, but I th I think we have a lot to be grateful for. And I'll start by telling you one of the things that we are so rejoicing in today at America's United for Life is that yesterday our online petition, where people can go and sign to register the fact that they are adamantly opposed to the Freedom of Choice Act, hit half a million signatures. <laughs> You know, we took a little bit of a beating in November, but we are not going away. We are still committed to this issue. And, you know, I am feeling a real sense with Michael of encouragement because the truth of the matter is this battle is not ours. We know that. And I feel that we have been given such a great gift to be here at this moment in time, to be the ones who face this great challenge. And you know, God has told us that he isn't going to put a challenge in front of us where he doesn't open up the way. And so to me, that's really exciting. And to be frank with you, the petition is a perfect way to start talking about Blogs for Life. Because I'm here to tell you that Americans United for Life did not spend a penny promoting that petition, other, aside from, you know, overhead and those of us who have worked on it. And what's so exciting to me about that is it's completely organic. It's completely organic. It's coming from you. It's coming from the bloggers. It's coming from the life activists who are taking a stand and saying, we're going to register our voices. And we look at this, and we just see it growing and growing and growing. And to me, it says, this is the power that we have through leveraging our activity online. We can get the word out in ways that we were never able to do before we had the power of the internet. It's, you know, if we can, it, there's kind of two sides of the coin. It's such a remarkable power, and we know that because, frankly, we do have a new president because of this power. You know, it's, it's not telling you anything you don't already know that Barack Obama and his team really harnessed and leveraged the power of the internet in a way that we haven't seen in politics before. But that should be also another ray of hope for us because this is something that we can do just as well as they have done. I gotta tell you, and this is the best audience to say this to because you guys are the ones who are out there on the web who are working in it day in and day out. Barack Obama and his activities online, not rocket science. I kind of get tired of people wringing their hands and saying, oh, the left has such a good handle on technology and we've got to catch up. We do need to catch up. We do need to be establishing our presence online in a very vibrant and um, forward-looking way. But we don't need to worry about the science behind it. It's just, it's just the telephone. It's just the telegraph. It's just a new way of communicating. It's still, it's still about content. It's still about getting out the word in a way that is compelling and gripping and authentic and original. And we've got that because we've got the truth on our side. Um, our great challenge, and this particularly uh, fits in with what I believe we've all been thinking about since November, is the real challenge that we're facing is the question that everybody keeps coming up and asking me is, what do we do now? The House is in control of the pro-abortion forces. The Senate is in control. The, the White House is in control. And let's face it, the mainstream media, academia, Hollywood, you know, if we really wanted to get ourselves depressed, we could spend a lot of time just sitting and thinking about the powers that are arrayed against us. But that's where Blocks for Life comes in. It, it, it really is, it really is um, a merry band of brothers just using a kind of, I, I see it as guerrilla warfare. It empowers us to come up against these um, uh, forces that are arrayed against us because we can go viral, we can talk to one another in a way that, um, has, that really leverages power. I think of it as SWAT teams. Our blogs are out there being SWAT teams getting the word out and that's, what, that's why blogs are so important. 
we're so obscenely outspent. You know, when I think of Planned Parenthood um, and their billion dollar budget, and the fact that, it, it, sometimes it just makes me laugh when I think about the fact that they are up on Capitol Hill today telling uh, the Congress that they need more money, uh, when they've, they, just that one piece, just that one component of the pro-abortion movement has a billion dollars, and 30% of that comes from our tax dollars. Um, I hope you've seen Patrick Luby's piece in Human Events today. Please link to that and get the word out. You know, he talks about the abortion bill bailout and says, why in the world, when we are facing this catastrophic financial crisis in our country, why would we spend more of our tax dollars on subsidizing abortion? Why? You know, and, and as pro-lifers, we are on such strong ground with this because even even our dear friends who adamantly oppose us on this issue, you know, your neighbor who is marginally uh, pro-choice and who describes themselves that way, they don't want their tax dollars going to subsidize it. So hit this theme hard in your blogs. As we see the president probably today repealing the Mexico City policy, this is an abortion bill, abortion business bailout. Our tax dollars going to fund abortion is not something that the American people voted for. So there's so very much um, that we need to do. The other thing that people keep asking me, particularly because of our online petition, is what do you expect from FOCA? FOCA, as you all know, is a rifle shot bill. It, it, it's so dangerous because it takes out the work that we've been doing at the state level just in one fell swoop. It eliminates all protections that we've developed for American women and their babies just in one fell swoop. I see it as a rifle shot. The other side is going to be smarter than that. Um, the pro-abortion forces all obviously, if they could do their agenda all in one fell swoop, that's what they're going to continue to press for. But the reality is, is we're going to face buckshot. It's going to come at us from every direction. It's going to come at us in the appropriations bill. It's going to come at us in the health bill. It's going to come at, it, at us in the labor HHS bill. It's going to be everywhere. I know because you guys are sophisticated that you've already seen the 55-page wish list that the abortion forces sent to um, the transition team. I mean, 55 pages of what they wanted to do. This, if, that, that, if that isn't the definition of buckshot, I don't know what it is. So that's why when I got up this morning, I was excited about coming and talking to you all. Because if you're going to face buckshot and you're obscenely outspent, <laughs> and the other side controls the levers of power, where are you going to go? And people keep asking me, what are you going to do? And my answer is, you all sitting here, right here today, looking at the power of the internet, a thousand voices, a million voices across this country, around the world, around the world. Um, it's exciting to think of the power that we can harness. I mean, sit just since the election. Those signatures on our petition are just since the election. We've got an incredible power with blogs. 